So I recently did a video showing off my original Revision Zero Apple II, and during that video I showed off a program that I had written that uses AppleSoft Basic to essentially create uh, user accounts for the teachers and students here at the Tech Center. Obviously it's not something that I use um, in my day-to-day -day job, it was mostly just to kind of get basic under my belt a little bit. So. Uh, what I want to do in this video is recreate that program and kind of show off what kinds of things people might have used BASIC for back in the late 1970s and early 1980s. So I'm here currently in an emulator. This one is um, an emulator for Linux, but really you can use um, any emulator or if you have an Apple II, all of this stuff will work on a real Apple II as well. So. First things first, um, if you don't know, AppleSoft Basic is a version of Basic written by Microsoft for Apple to use on their Apple II systems. Um, originally, the Apple II would have shipped with Integer Basic, which was written by Steve Wozniak. This is not that. This is AppleSoft Basic. This is the programming language that would have been shipped on the majority of the Apple II systems um, after the original Apple IIs. The, the early Apple IIs. So uh, if you are looking for integer basic, a lot of this stuff will work, but I don't think the program runs properly in integer basic. So if you are running an emulator, make sure that you have it set to uh, an Apple II Plus or a later version of the Apple IIs because this will not work in integer basic. So first things uh, first, when it comes to writing this program, Basically, we've got to treat this like it is a blank floppy disk that's been stuck in the Apple II and there's nothing on it, but you want to use this floppy disk for future use, right? So I have a floppy disk that I have all the programs on it that I've written on my Apple II and I want to treat that floppy disk as my programs disk or whatever. So first thing that we have to do is create what's called a hello program. What this does is when you insert the disk, it will, if the device is configured to auto boot, and most of them are, um, are configured to auto boot any disk that's inserted when you start the machine, uh, you need to create a program that will run when you insert that floppy disk and it boots from it. Basically, this is just a, a welcome screen, typically. So, what I will do is we'll just write a simple hello program. The, the one that I showed off in the video was a bit more involved. It kind of described how to search for files and stuff on the disk and said, hello, you know, I'm an original Apple II, all that stuff. This is going to be much more simple than that. So here's what we're going to do. One thing to note about the first thing I should say to note about basic is that you have to number your own lines. There is no text editor on an Apple II. There's just a command prompt and you enter in your commands one line at a time by number. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to number starting at the number 10. And the reason for that is typically when you are coding in basic, you number your lines by tens. And the reason that you, you do it that way is because if I wanted to insert a line before 10, so let's say, um, let's say I'm, I'm writing this program and I, I know that the command to print the word hello is just print and then hello in quotes and I save that on my on my line 10. If I go to run the program what it's going to do is it's just going to print hello. Well that's not visually very appealing right because I've still got on the screen I can still see print hello and then the run and then hello. Well if I want it to just you know if I stick the the disk in all I want it to do is say hello, I want it to clear the screen out immediately. Well, obviously I'd need to clear the screen before I run the hello command. So the, the way that I would have to do that is to line my number, start my, my, my number at five, which is typically what you would do is you'd split, you know, the difference between the tens, but um, it could be any number before 10. And if I do um, the, the home command, which is the, the command to clear the screen, then run it, what it will do is it'll clear the screen and then type it there. And so what I've done there is inserted a line prior to 
line 10 that clears the screen and then it prints hello. So the reason that you want your programs to be numbered by 10 is because if you want to insert something before that line, you can't just move everything down a line to insert something before it. So basically this is just a built-in sort of safety measure that allows you to insert, you know, up to nine things, eight or nine things in between each um, line, just in case you end up needing to do that. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear out lines five and 10. So we now have a blank program. There's nothing, um, there's nothing saved to the program. So let's go uh, start at 10 and we'll do the home command. And then we'll do the next line, line 20, then we'll do print hello. And then if I run it, it's going to do the same thing. So that's all we need to do, right? That's all we need to do for a hello program. And this is what's going to run if we load this, this disk up. So let's just do save hello. And what this will do is it will save the hello file to this disk. If I type the catalog command, it will list off the different programs on the disk. And there's the hello program. If we load the hello program and then list the hello program, which shows us the code in the program it that that's our program right there line 10 says home clear the screen line 20 says print hello so these are kind of some some fundamentals that we're going to use in uh in our our bigger program here so let's create a new program and i'll clear the screen and this is going to be our program that will create the the user accounts so line 10 we already know we want to go home we want to clear the screen we don't need anything on the screen left over when we finally run the program. So that's going to be our line 10. Uh, line 20, generally, first thing you want to do in a program after you've cleared the screen is give a welcome, you know, some kind of welcome message for each program that tells everybody what the program is and how to use it. So on line 20, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print, let's go print, hi there. Welcome to the, now something to pay attention to is, on a, on a typical Apple II, you got 40 characters left and right. Your X axis is 40 characters wide. So if I wanted to type out the, the message, hi there, welcome to the GI Tech account generator, that's too many characters and it'll wrap around the screen and it could potentially wrap in mid word. So it, that's not very visually appealing. So we, we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into two lines so we'll go hi there welcome to the quote actually i have to I, see this is a perfect example of why editing in in applesoft can be difficult is if you forget uh to type a command you can't really conveniently insert stuff you know in here so i have to i'll have to type over it there's no backspace um and there's no insert there's no convenient insert some of the later models had um commands that would allow you to do that but i'm, I'm not going to demonstrate that here i'm going to type over this i'm going to type print then quote hi there welcome to the and then on line 30 we'll do gi tech generator and so we'll save that and so now let's just save account gen we'll just call the program account gen let's save the program and then if we load account gen and run it it should clear the screen and print our little message hi there welcome to the gi tech account generator perfect so here's what we'll do uh let's move on to line 40 now, one thing that, that is useful to note, too, is that if you're trying to format a screen a certain way, so let's say you want, like, spaces in between blocks of text, the way that you would typically accomplish that in BASIC is to just print a blank line. So what I'm going to do on line 40 is I'm just going to put quotes, because basically what this is saying is I want to say, I want to print nothing. I want to print nothing. So I on line 40, I'm going to print nothing. And then uh, I want to ask this person what their name is because we're trying to create them a user account. So on line 50, I'm going to type print 
what is your first name? And then on line 60, uh, this is where we need to prompt the user to input their, their first name. So this is gonna be uh, an insert prompt, an input prompt here. And the way that you do this is you type the word input and this tells the computer, hey, I'm now gonna be asking for something that the user at the keyboard is gonna insert here. So we're gonna say input, and then the way that you indicate to the system that you want a uh, string from this user, so a, a string uh, variable type, is you would type the name of the variable that you wanna use. So in our case, we wanna use the, the, the word first, the, the variable name first we'll do first and then because it is a string not a set of numbers you have to insert a dollar sign and that just tells the system hey expect this person to type in a string as opposed to a, a series of numbers or something like that so uh, line 60 input first and then uh, line 70 because we don't want things to get too cramped um, I'm gonna print another blank line here um, and then on line 80, we want to ask their last name. What this will do is once once they've hit, you know, type their name in and they hit enter, it's going to store that value in the variable we've called first here. So that's what's happening here. So on line uh, 80, we want to ask their last name. So we'll do same thing, print, what is your last name? And then on line 90, we will input... We'll call this variable last because it's their last name and that's also going to be a string. So um, we'll do that on line 90. Uh, and then line 100, again, probably a good idea to add a little space. So we'll print a blank line on line 100. And then we want to indicate to the user that the computer has successfully uh, recorded what their first and last names are. So we will, on line 110, let's print out uh, a message to the user by name so that they know things have recorded properly. So on line 110, we're going to do print. We'll do, let's say, great, hi, comma. And then when we're concatenating strings, like putting messages together, putting strings together, you have to remember, obviously, to include the spaces um, inside the quotes when you're trying to um, stick things together. So I want to, basically what I want to print out is, great, um, uh, hi, first name, last name, and then we'll do the, the graduation year, all that stuff. So I, I want to do great, hi, and then we will um, add a um, semicolon here, which is kind of the... Basically, it means move on to the next thing um, when you're printing. Don't print it on a new line is essentially what that means. Um, when you use a colon in place of this, it just means move on to the next command. And that's kind of a convenient way to include multiple commands on one line. In this case, what we're trying to do is print multiple things on the same line. So I want to print great, high, comma, blank, right? And then we want... Um, a semicolon to say, okay, I want to print something else. And the reason we have to do this is because we want to use the variables first name and last name. So we're going to say print first. And then because we need a space in between uh, the first name and the last name, we need to include uh, inside of some quotes, we need to include a space. And then we'll add another uh, semicolon, we'll do last dollar sign, and then we'll include another uh, semicolon, and then uh, for the sake of enthusiasm, let's just throw a, a uh, an exclamation point in there inside the quote. So what this should print now is great, hi, first name and last name based on what has been entered so far. So... Uh, let's save that on line 110 and we'll save account gen. This is a good idea to do periodically as you are writing your program is figure out whether or not it's working as you're going because if you get all the way through the program stuff gets really annoying really fast to try and track down what went wrong. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to load the account gen program and we're going to run it. And at this point, all it should do is give us our welcome message and it should ask us what our first and last name is and then print it back to us. So we're going to hit run. Welcome to the account generator. What's your first name? We'll type in John. So that worked. What's your last name? Smith. That worked. And what should happen is it should print out John Smith. So great. Hi, John Smith. So that's all the program does right now. So let's list it back out so we know where we're at. We're going to start back on line 20. Uh, on line 20, let's print another space, a uh, blank line, just to, to make things a little cleaner. And then on 130, we're going to ask um, what year the person will graduate in. So in which year will you graduate? Uh, let's see. And the reason... Uh, the, the reason we ask this is just because of the format that I use for account creation here is I include the last two digits of the year in which the person graduates in their user account. So um, in which year will you graduate? That's going to be line um, 130. And then something important is, well, we've got staff, right? They're not going to graduate. So if we don't want to include those two numbers, all they need to do is leave that line blank. So we can on line 40, we can tell them with a print statement. Um, if you are staff, leave blank. So uh, line 150, let's, um, let's do, let's see here, input year, right? Because we wanna, uh, we wanna gather some information from them, right? So we need to do, um, uh, a, a year variable that they are going to store the 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 year that they they graduated in and because we aren't using it for um, numerical purposes calculations anything like that um, I, I generally because I'm just printing it with other characters in a string I'm gonna make this a string variable as well so um, we're gonna do input year and then we will print uh, a blank line and then basically from there we have our full um, data gathering piece right so if I save the account gen program and load it back up and run it we're gonna have the same thing here and then it's gonna ask in which year we graduate if your staff leave blank I'm gonna say 2025 so what it's done just now is it has stored um, that information 2025 as the variable year so what we need to do now is write what is called a subroutine um, and the way that this was done this is kinda of like functions in modern programming languages and the, re the, the, the way in which you would do this back in the day is with subroutines. You would go somewhere on, on your theoretical you know, page of line numbers, and you would just go somewhere you know you aren't going to run into later if you're trying to add more to this first bit of the program. So I want to do um, the password generation portion. Right, because we need the program to do some calculations to actually generate the password that we're going to provide to the person. And obviously it needs to be a random password because we don't want the password to be the same for everybody. So we will do on line 1000. We'll just separate that way out from anything else. And um, let's put a remark here that just tells us, okay, at line 1000, this is what we're doing. So we use the REM command. That's just short for remark. And basically that's a comment from modern programming languages so it will the program when it runs it will disregard anything following the rem command we can do a uh, lot in line 1000 we'll do a remark that just says uh password generation right that just tells us this is what we're doing at line 1000 so on line 1010 1010 what we're going to want to do is probably let's we want to get a, a sort of loading bar kind of that that shows people hey I'm doing the generation part um, this is not necessary in terms of using the 
random uh, integer command that that the Apple II comes with, that AppleSoft comes with, but um, it comes in handy, and I'll show you why here in a minute. You could do this just for visual reasons, right? Because it's cool to see a bar move across the screen, but uh, there is actually a practical use for the little pound signs that go across the screen on that program. So on uh, line 1010, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna print generating account details, and we'll do some, you know, some ellip an ellipses here, so an ellipsis here so that they, um, you know, just for style. And here's what we're gonna do on line 1020 and below. Basically, the, the goal here is we want to print a pound sign across the bottom of the screen, one right after the other, just to show, um, you know, this idea of progress being made. So the way that you would do that is typically with a, a for loop and a print statement. So the for loop basically says um, for variable equals one to 40 in this case, right? Because we have 40 columns on this screen. We only have 40 characters across and we wanna print all the way across. So we're gonna say from column one to column 40, print out a pound sign and then go to the next one. So for each one, it's gonna print and then it's gonna to move to two and it's gonna to move to three and four and five all the way to 40 and then it'll move on to the next command. Now, the way that you would do this, if all you wanted to do was print those things across the screen, would be, um, let's say our movement variable, our, our iteration variable is going to be G. So we're going to do for variable G equals 1 to 40. Uh, on, on the next line, we could do um, print and then the pound sign and then our little semicolon. And that just tells the system when you print, when you're done printing, don't move to the next line. And we wanted to do that because we wanted to print all the way across, right? So on line 1030, that's what we'll, that's what we'll have it do. Um, so now if I save account gen and load it and run it, we should get, uh, let's see if we get our print over here. Yep. Oh, so we have uh, we have an error here. So it only printed the one time. So let's figure out what happened. Um, list this out. So we have print generating account details for G equals one to 40. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we forgot the next G. That's the, that's the key. Uh, so that we have to tell the system, hey, when when you're done printing, move to the next one. Uh, the for loop is, is, is stopping at one because we didn't tell it to go any further. So we'll do at 1040, let's do uh, next G. And that's just the command that tells it to, to move on to the next one. So now if we save it and load it and run it, we should get, uh, there it goes. So it, it shoots right across the screen because it's printing as fast as it can. Um, and there's a way to fix that, but, but we kind of get the picture here. So let's, let's, um, let's kind of use this in a, in a useful way. Like it's cool that it prints across the screen, but not super useful other than a visual, right? So one thing that is important to know about um, the Apple II and AppleSoft Basic is that there is no truly, really everything um, in computers, there is no truly random number. So on the Apple II, if you hard shut it down and hard boot it back up, and you run the command that allows you to generate random integers, what it will do is it will come up with the same number every time. Um, that is not super useful when you're trying to generate unique passwords the first time. It is handy for like writing a program because the pattern isn't gonna be the same every time, but the first one is always gonna be the same. So what we kinda wanna do with this program is can we force the system to generate a few passwords or a few 
random numbers before we ask for the one that we actually want to use. That way, that initial one or two or three that might be the same are kind of out of its system, and then we're, we are generating random passwords, right? So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to keep on line 1020, we're going to keep 4G 1 to 40 because we still want to print across the bottom. But on line 1030, we're going to do a nested for loop, so a, a for loop inside of this for loop, and we're going to say for, um, let's just do n equals 1 to 10. Um, and what we're doing here is, how about for every pound sign that prints, generate a random integer using the random integer command every single time you print that out 10 times. So by the time you get to the end of the loading uh, bar that goes across, we will have actually generated something like 400 uh, random numbers before we actually ask for the one that we want. And that will make sure that it's never the same when you run the program. So 4n, 1 to 10. Uh, using a colon, we want to type another uh, command on the same line. Let's say for, for n equals 1 to 10, let, um, we're going to create a new variable. Let the variable roll, because we're basically um, kind of rolling a dice, right? We're, we're rolling a random, uh, random number generator. So let's let roll equal, and then what we want to set roll to is the random integer, right? That it's gonna that it's gonna generate. Now the way that the random command works in Apple II is in, in AppleSoft is it generates a a random number between zero and one. So it's actually not an integer. Um, it's a, a decimal place, and that's not a huge deal for what we're trying to do here because we can multiply that number by a number to make it into an integer that is closer to what we're trying to do. So we want, um, for our purposes, when we're generating this number, the number is just the, the set of numbers that's going to go in the password. The format for our password is going to be capital CTE because I work for a Korean Tech Ed Center. Um, the password is going to be a random five-digit number, and then there's going to be an exclamation mark at the end. Um, not a super secure password, I understand. Um, this is not actually indicative of how we do things here, but um, you know, for demonstration purposes, this this works. So we want to generate a random five-digit number, which means it can't go below ten thousand, and it can't go below. 99,999. So we need to generate a random decimal and multiply it by 100,000 to make sure that it is a five digit number in the end. So we're going to say, um, because we want it to be an integer, you can actually wrap whatever you're typing into the integer function and it will force it to be an integer. It'll round it. So uh, we'll, we'll say um, we want it to be an integer. Let's do random number command is rnd, um, rnd1. And then we'll multiply that by 100,000. And then we will, uh, we'll throw our next n command right here at the end, um, as opposed to putting it on, a, on another line like we did above. So for 1030, it's 4n equals 1 to 10. Let roll equal the integer generated by the random number um, command, and then we'll move on to the next one. So that's line 1030. Now on line 1040, because we want um, this to run each time something is printed, on 1040 we can do our print, and we'll do our pound sign. Uh, actually, we need uh, to include the semicolon, right? Because we want them to print all on the same lines. So we'll do that and include our semicolon. Uh, now on line 1050, uh, because we have completed our 
random number generating, but we still need to go back to where the print statement happens, right? So we need to go back to G, um, which is currently living on line 1040, which is, n or it's not anymore. Let me, let me just list this out so I can, this is part of the process, right? Is when you're writing, um, because there's not a convenient way to edit your text, you have to kind of list things out every once in a while to remind yourself what's where. So um, line 10, so the, yeah, so the original um, next G that we were using to print our pound signs out is gone. So we now want that to live on line 1050 and we'll print, uh, we'll move on to the next iteration after our random uh, number generation is complete. So on line 1050, that's where we'll do our next G. And that'll, um, that'll loop through. So at this point, that little loading bar now rolls 10 random numbers each time it prints out a, a pound sign. So that's a useful case for something like that. So let's, uh, let's get another new line just to have things be a little cleaner. Um, and let's save the program as well, just because we've done something. We've completed a task, sort of. Um, so after we've printed a uh, blank line, we'll go to line 1070. Uh, 1070. And on line 1070, we want to just let them know, hey, things went according to plan. So we'll do print. Let's print... Um, Let's print details generated. That kind of matches what we set up above. Details generated that says, hey, things went well. Unfortunately, this can't, you know, this isn't like a like a modern um, response that, that like on a modern programming language is if it fails, you can tell them that it failed. If it if it succeeded, you can tell them it succeeded. And in this case, um, it, the program will just error out. It, it, we can't print like a true generated or not generated, but we know basically that if we got to this point, it was generated successfully. So we can just use a print statement and it doesn't actually have to check anything. So on line 1070, we'll have print details generated. Uh, 1080, let's print another blank line. And then on 10, 1090, um, let's kind of think about what we did there. We, we generated a random number, but it is possible because of the way that the rounding works, it is possible for the number to be too low, right? Because it could round down. If, in, in the case where it is a perfect number for it to round down, in theory, we could get 9999. And we don't want to do that. So... Um, we know that um, if that's the case, we kind of need it to roll again by the time it, uh, it gets to our, our random number. So let's include an if statement that says if the number is less than 10,000, because that's our five digits, do it again. So on line 1090, Let's do let num, that's going to be our number, let num equal um, integer, this is where we're going to, this is where we're going to generate our, uh, the, the, the actual five digits that we're going to use in our passwords. We're going to say let num equal, and we'll do the wrap it in an integer value, same command that we used above, we'll do um, int random, um, one times one hundred thousand and so that will that will assign this random digit to the num uh, variable so at this point it will generate us a number and save it in that variable and we'll have it accessible for us to use so on line uh, 1100, this is where we want to check and make sure that it's above, uh, that it's not below 10,000. 
So let's say if num is below 10,000, we actually want to go back to 1090. And we're going to make it do it over and over again until it gives us a number that's not less than 10,000. If the number is 10,000 or above, it'll just skip this line and move on to the next thing. So this is just a built-in safety check to make sure that we have the right number of digits. So on line uh, 1110, let's do, uh, let's just print it out. And we'll, this is the part where we're gonna tell the, the user, this is what your credentials are gonna be. So on line 1110, we're gonna print your new GI Tech username is, and then uh, 1120, we're gonna print. Now, the format for our username, if you recall, the first letter of the username is the first letter of the person's first name, and then their full last name, and then the the right two or the last two digits of their graduation year and then at gitech.net. So what we want to do is we want to print the the first letter of the first name. And the way that you accomplish this in AppleSoft Basic is with the left command. So if we do left and then we'll indicate that it's a string variable. So we'll do left of the first name variable, we want to use the left, uh, the leftmost digit, and we want to capture only, um, only the first digit of the using the left command. So if we did um, the format here is left, and then you you input your variable, and then the second thing that you input is the number of digits that you want to, or the number of characters that you want to capture. So if I wanted to capture the, you know, first three digits, I would indicate a three here, but I only want to indicate, um, I only want to capture the, the first letter. So I'm going to uh, put a one here. And this just says, um, print the, you know, the leftmost of the first name variable and only the first digit. We want to print that. Then we want to print with no spaces the, the, um, full last name variable. So we'll do the last name variable here. And then we want to capture the right to of the graduation year. So it's the same thing. So it's just right and then uh, year, the string year, because we did save that number as a string. And we want the right, the two rightmost characters. So we'll put a two there. And then we can print the at gitech.net. And what this should look like when we're done is, you know, first letter, first name, full last name, last two digits of graduation year at gitech.net. So that's how that should look when we're done. So that went through, that worked. Um, so let's, again, let's save account gen. Let's uh, load the account gen. And then let's run it just to test if things are working uh, the way that things have uh, been going so far. So let's see if things are working. Uh, we'll do Alex Jones. Now let's do um, Alex Johnson. Okay, so we're, we're off to a good start here. What year am I going to graduate? Well, I'm staff, so I'm going to, that's not actually my name, but, you know, um, let's say this person is staff, so we'll, we'll leave it blank. It's going to generate the account details, and it should print now uh, what should look like a complete account. So, GI Tech username is a Johnson at GI Tech.net. So, that worked. Um, so, let's go back. We'll list this program out. And on line 1130, let's create a, a new line here just to clean things up. And then 1140, we want to do the password now. So we're going to say your new GI Tech uh, password is 
and then we'll we'll kind of concatenate in the same way that we did for the username. So on line 1150, we will print, we want it to be capital CTE, and then the random number that we generated, and then an exclamation point. So we'll do uh, CTE, and then on the same line, we'll print our num variable, which this doesn't have to have uh, the, uh, this does not have to have the dollar sign next to it, because in this case, we're not using it as a string. We don't need it to be a string. So um, this can be a, a number. And I don't actually think that the, the, the year needs to be a string. It's just um, something that I, I did the first time and something that I'm doing this time just because I know that it works um, when you're concatenating strings together. But in theory, I think you could probably not have that be a string. But so for this, we're going to say print CTE, and then we're going to print the, the five-digit number, and then we're going to print the exclamation mark in quotes. Uh, let's just make sure that that looks right, and it does. So on line 1160, we'll add another blank line for uh, formatting reasons. And at this point, they should have their username and their password printed out. The only thing left to do is ask them if they want to print another one. So let's do our, well, you know what, let's, let's actually, um, let's save it again and run it just to make sure things are working. So we'll save account gen, load account gen, and then run it. Uh, Bill Johnson. I'm going to graduate in 2026, so it's going to generate our account details. And, okay, so I've got a syntax error in 1160, but we did get our username and our password, and that printed all correctly. And that is a number that we have not seen before, so uh, that, is a, that is a random number. So let's list this back out and see what we've got at 1160 here. Uh, oh, I didn't put print, so at 11, again, 1160, we'll do print. So now we're ready to ask them if they want to do another one. Let's go to line 1170, and we will print, uh, would you like to generate another? If I spell it right, that would help. Would you like to generate another question mark? Um, and the answer to this question will determine what the program does next right so if they say yes we're going to loop back to the beginning and do it all over again if they hit no we'll probably print out some kind of message that says hey you know thanks for playing thanks for using the program whatever bye bye so uh, on 1180 um you know actually i think uh, I think line 1170 might be too long. I think it might actually wrap. So we're gonna do, we're gonna try this this way. Let's do, would you like to? And then we will do on 1180, we'll print, generate another. And then we can move on on 1190. So 1190, we're gonna ask for, we're gonna ask for their input, right? We wanna know, Yes or no? Um, do they want to continue or no? So let's just make the string called YN uh, for yes or no, and it'll just depend on what they input. So um, we'll do uh, input yes or no, uh, the string, and then print out, uh, let's see, 11, Oh, 1,200? Is that where we're at? We are already to 1,200. Uh, we'll print a blank line for formatting. And then basically what we want to do is if the variable yn is equal to y or yes, then we want to loop it back to the beginning. If it's a no, then we want to go to this, this ending. We want to end the program. Now, you could just specify to the user that their response has to be either a Y or an N. Um, but most cases, people are going to, in a lot of cases, people will type the word yes or no. So we want it to work in either case. 
And so the way that we can do that is we can say if we can use this left command again. If um, the left value of this yn string, uh, the first value equals y, go to 10, which this won't work because I didn't number the line, of course. So let's, let's number the line, 12, 10, if left of the yn string variable equals yes, go to 10, and then 12, 20, we can say if left yn uh, the first digit equals no, um, we know we're going to have to write a um, another subroutine to close out the program. So uh, let's say at line 2000, we'll have the, um, the program termination subroutine. We will, uh, in some cases you would use go sub, but then you need to return out of, you, have to, you actually have to return out of a subroutine if it is properly classified as a subroutine. In this case, we don't actually need to like return out of it and then do something else. We're just ending the program there. So what we can do is we can just say go to line uh, 2000. And well, that's where, that's where we'll write that out. So if basically the, the leftmost character is a Y, then go to 10, which is right back to the beginning, and we'll run the program again. If no, we'll end the program. So then on line uh, 1230, or no, uh, on line 2000, we're ready to write the termination. So let's leave another remark. We'll do um, just program termination so that we know that's what's going on on line 2000. Um, on line 2010, we will, let's just print no problem, bye bye. And um, I think we want to just indicate to the person that the, the, the program has ended. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the computer beep at the user to indicate, hey, okay, I, I get the message and the program is done. Uh, and the way that you do that, with uh, an Apple II at least, uh, the only way that I know of to do it is to peek at memory at a certain location. And what it will do is it will click the, the built-in speaker of the computer. If you want to make a tone out of the click, you just have to make it do it for an extended period of time. Uh, you have to make it buzz, basically make it make it click over and over and over again, right? Uh, which sounds like a for loop to me. So on line 2020, we're going to say for i equals 1 to, let's say, 25. We want to make it click 25 times in a row to make a tone. Um, let's do on line 2030, we'll create a buzz um, variable and we will set it equal to, and the command to make the, um, the speaker click is we're going to peek at 49200 and that will make, uh, that will make it click. So at 2040, we can say next I. And that will loop it 25 times and make it click. And then on 2050, we can type end and that will return us out of the program. So in theory, our program should be done now. So let's save the account gen program and we'll load the account gen program. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's be very careful here. So I made a mistake here and I don't know if you caught it or not. Um, I added one too many C's in save, and if I hit load account gen, the original, it actually would um, overwrite my changes because I uh, didn't save it to the right spot. So this is something we got to be careful of. Um, let's make sure we are typing in the right stuff. So we'll save account gen, then load account gen, and then we'll list it out, make sure our program is intact. Everything looks to be there. 
So let's run the program and see if it all works the way it's supposed to. Uh, hi there, welcome to the GITech account generator. What is your first name? We're gonna do the same thing. John Smith. In which year will you graduate if your staff leave blank? Uh, let's do 2029 or 28. And it's going to generate account details. So remember, for each one of these pound signs that it's printing, it's rolling 10 times. Details generated. Your new GI Tech username is jsmith28 at gitech.net. Your new password is CTE70327 exclamation point. Would you like to generate another? Let's just hit yes to make sure that part worked. Yep, it looped right back to the beginning. So let's do J San and we'll do, um, let's say he's staff. We're gonna not include the graduation year. We'll see if this works properly. And it appears like it does. Do you wanna generate another? So when I hit no, it should beep at us and it should terminate the program. So I heard the beep. I don't know if it comes through on camera or not, but the beep did work. So our program was successful. Now, when I type catalog to catalog the disk, we should see, uh, yeah, three programs, our hello program that we created at the beginning um, and the erroneous account gen save with one too many C's. So what I can do is I can type delete ACC C account gen, and that will um, delete the extra one. And those are our two programs. So we'll load our account gen program just to make sure. And then if we run it, so we're all good. If you hit control C, it will uh, clear you out of it and then we can go back. So that is a quick overview of, well, quick is relative, obviously it's an hour long video, but a quick ish overview of a lot of the stuff that people would have been using back in the day to write basic programs. Um, we had, uh, string variables, we had number variables, we had um, the left and right uh, functions to kind of rip out the, the first and last digits of certain things. We're concatenating strings, we're saving variables, we're generating random numbers. So for me, in my opinion, this is a really good project, sort of, to learn some of the basics of basic. So um, I won't claim to be an expert in basic. Obviously, I'm not. Uh, there are some people who can do some crazy stuff in basic, but I'm not one of those people. Um, so th there are other places you can learn about basic, but not that many because it's a dying language. People don't use it very often, unfortunately. But um, hopefully you found this to be interesting. Hopefully you found it to be informative. Uh, if you did, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know if you're working in basic if you're interested in trying to put together some other programs in basic um, and obviously, you know, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. I don't put out that much content um, all the time, but hopefully you feel that when I do the information that you get is useful and interesting. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for stopping by.